All right, let's clean the Carcano. So you can see this one's in pretty good shape. Did a more in-depth video on my channel that you can check out. Little chip here. First thing I'm gonna do is take this bolt out. The bolt's in pretty good shape. I'll take what the bolt I like to do is decock it. Simply twist it. And then press this piece right here. See this guide right here? You can see this little notch. Just slide it up. I right, just gotta slide it back here. This little cutout comes right out. I'll go ahead and just toss them into my pot right here. Gotta boil and cart them anyway, and it's a good way to keep them from getting lost. Actually, I'm gonna look at this screw here. See if we can get it out. Turning pretty easy. Now we have all of our bolt pieces. Got a pretty nice spring here. Safety looks like it's in good shape. A lot of these parts are just dirty. Firing pin looks good. See any damage or anything in the bolt, so these parts are good. It's kind of shallow. That's going in the pot. This guy's stuck. This little plastic hammer. A little bit of rust, but not bad. All right, next, we're going to look at this middle band here. Slid it off. You can see that crack does go all the way through, but not bad. It's a piece of paper off. Those look pretty good. Next, we'll take a look at this trigger guard. Remove that. Ourselves a wider bit here. Very important to be patient with these screws, especially when they're shallow like this. You gotta do a lot of downward pressure just to get them to move. You can see this screw is pretty shallow. I might replace this one. I do have a Carcano that I got as a parts gun that I might swap this out. Next will be this one. We got a good fit here. Those are a little thinner one.
This one's coming out pretty easy. The screw's actually pretty nice. Right, so carefully lift this out. Looks dirty, but in pretty good shape. Don't see any damage to it. Just needs a really good cleaning. Take a look at the receiver here. Very dirty. I don't see any damage to it. Definitely looks like the original bluing under here is in pretty good condition. As far as the stock goes, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Damage or cracks. I'm going to take a look at this rear sling swivel. Not pretty easily, luckily. These wood screws are always a little bit of a gamble. I've done a repair on these before with infields. Sometimes you have to basically redrill drill basically redrill the holes and uh, put a hardwood dowel in there to fix them. If you want to clean this slot out really well, it's full of gunk. Let's cut that out safely. You can see some rust was already forming on the bottom. Eventually that would turn into pitting and damage the wood, so it's good that I took this out. Next we'll take out the butt plate screws. These are a little softer as brass, but I can kind of scratch away at this without worrying about scratching any of the steel. So I, mean, I can scratch at the steel and won't affect it. I feel like a lot of these screws were properly greased before they went back into the rifle. It was a little concerning to see that, but we'll see how these screws go back in. enough to pull out. Fingers. Took a little bit to find the right angle here, but you can see the butt here is in decent shape. You can see a stamp there. I'll probably clean up pretty well. But the holes seem okay. Very fine steel wool with some oil on it. So this is 4-0. So it's very, very light duty. Can't worry about damaging the steel or the finish that's on it. This is just to get all that hardened gunk off of it before you boil and card it.
always use brass brushes or steel. You can go to town with a brass brush and not damage the steel or the finish. Right after a quick wipe down, you can see how much stuff came off of it. You can see just after a real quick scrubbing, some very fine steel wool and some oil, a lot of the stuff is gone and you can see a really nice finish underneath here. So it should boil and card really nicely on these exposed areas. See right here especially. Cleans up really nicely. So always go back through with some of these harder to reach areas with a brush and you, know, you can just brush this out pretty easily. See that? And then we'll go through with some Q-tips, clean that out really well. You can see just a quick pass can get a lot of the stuff out of there. Some of this more hardened stuff, hit that with a brass brush and see it starts to come off. You can also let some oil sit on it. Uh, tang is usually where you see a lot of pitting or corrosion. Doesn't look too bad. It's very minor pitting, but nothing to worry about. Now, I like to take apart the trigger once I get it a little cleaned up, um, mainly because some of these pins can be stuck with some of this hardened grease. So I like to clean it off first, and then I'll be able to tap these pins out a little easier. And I don't want to risk damaging them. See a lot of hardened grease here. So it might need to be scraped out with either a brass or plastic scraper that I have. It's just a way to scrape the stuff off without damaging the steel. Never use like wire wheels or dremels or anything like that to remove this stuff. I like to do it by hand. You can see, just after about five minutes, it's looking pretty good. All right, so I got a nice brass brush here. I'm going to go down the bore with it. Got it oiled, and this is basically to push out a ton of crud that's in there. It's basically packed with grease. So we're going to use this to clean it out and see how it looks. So you can see the bore is actually very nice on this one. That's right, so the top hand guard. I got some very fine steel wool. Got a little bit of linseed oil in there, some boiled linseed oil. I'm just going to rub it in here. I'm going to go very light with the, the steel wool. You don't want to rub it too hard. You do want to make sure you get a lot of that grime off of it. Be very careful with the steel wool. You can see right here it's just taking this stuff right off. You can kind of see the before and after here. Now you want to be careful to make sure there's no splinters. If you do that and grab a splinter, you'll put a pretty big chip in your stock. So you want to do a light pass. I 
Now that we're cleaning it, you can definitely see that crack a little easier. Just after a few minutes of cleaning, you can see a big difference already from what it looked like before. Got a little bit more cleaning to go, but definitely a huge difference. You can see it's got that sheen of just dirt on it. I'll do a very light rub on it. You can kind of see the areas you need to focus on. You can start seeing a serial number appear here. This is pretty, there's a piece of wood or grime. You can see here, you can start seeing the numbers show. It's like a very nice finish underneath the dirt on the wood. You can already see the difference, what I just cleaned, with the dirty part of the stock. It's much darker, it's got that sheen of dirt over it, whereas what I just cleaned, you can really see the nice grain in the wood, the finish. That boiled linseed oil really makes it pop. I want to be really careful about inlets like this. I want to make sure the edge is strong doesn't have any weak points. We start rubbing in there. You can see it's already a lot cleaner. I only need to use steel oil in the first pass if you got a lot of dirt. After that, you can just use rags. And only very, very fine steel wool. This is 4 0 grade, so very fine. It's also very good in areas like this where you get a lot of built up dirt. Grind. Now it's very nice the Italians did this, put a piece of steel here. Brass would be even better, but I'll take the steel. Now it keeps the wood from getting any damage to it. Just a cursory cleaning, still got some more cleaning to go on it, but you can see the stock already looks a whole of a lot better than it did before. See that hardened grease, just like we saw in the top hand guard, just coming right off. It'll make for a much nicer fit. Now, if you're not experienced with these stocks, you might want to take your time. I'm going a little fast, but I got a pretty good eye for wood damage. You never really know what's under these. Uh, looks like a bunch of dirt and some mold. So you never really know what's under there, so you just want to be really careful and um, keep an eye out for any wood damage. 
You don't want to nick something and make it bigger. Now, the little deeper parts, we'll probably get that in a second go around. We'll get a brush in there. Overall, you can see it's already cleaning up pretty nicely. Just got to get down in here as well. Receiver and the barrel pretty much cleaned up. You can see it's in pretty good shape. It's got the date, manufacturer. I believe this is where the barrel was made. Serial number, some inspection marks. See the finish looks pretty good on it. Top hand guard looks pretty good. The linseed oil did a pretty good job with it. And you can see the butt right here cleaned up well. Well, the rest of the stock looks pretty good. As well as in the inlay here. So looks pretty good overall. So the only real damage I was able to see to the stock is there's a few chips back here where the butt is, but other than that, it looks pretty good.
I got all small parts cleaned up. I like to do an initial cleaning and then I usually follow up a few months later when the oil gets a chance to work its way in. But the parts look pretty good. Cleaned out the magazine that was pretty filthy. That plate looks a lot better than it was before. Looks like it's got a pretty good firing pin as well. So go ahead and reassemble this. So if you enjoyed this video, it was a little different than some other ones. I went through kind of like a full clean with this. I skipped ahead a few parts and fast forwarded it to make it a manageable length. 
but I covered the entire process of disassembling this Carcano, cleaning it, reassembling it. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Not a lot of finish remaining, but overall, a lot of the markings, including the manufacturer mark, the rear sight, and other parts, pretty good condition. Aside from this gouge in the stock, which I'll fix at a later date, the stock's in really good condition as well. There is a minor crack here, but that's repairable as well. But the bolt's pretty smooth, and the bore's pretty good on this. So overall, again, really happy with it. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions about this rifle, the process I used to clean it, or any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. If you'd like to see more of these videos, feel free to subscribe and sign up for alerts. And as always, thank you for watching.